What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here for PackersNews.com. Late on Wednesday afternoon. Uh, it's a slow day today. Um, the beginning of the new league year. The Packers have yet to announce the moves that were reported yesterday. Um, namely, uh, the signing of Jimmy Graham uh, and the trade for Demarius Randall from last Friday. But um, they have obviously announced they released Jordy Nelson yesterday. Jordy taking visits already out uh, in Oakland and has drawn up a lot of interest around the league. Um, so I thought I'd jump on here and say hello, Julia. Hello, John. What's up? Uh, good afternoon, Luis. How are you? Jennifer, I'm well. Thank you for asking. Chad asks, do you think Ted would have traded Randall? Ooh, that's a good question. I tend to doubt it. Um, I really think that was uh, driven by Gutekunst, but Obviously, we'll never get a definitive answer on that one. But uh, one of Ted's, uh, you know, I guess you could, it depends on if you call it a fault or um, one of the things that he stood by all the time were his guys. And um, the idea that they could still help the team and it could get better and improve. And you, know, you saw Demarius Randall down the stretch last year. He definitely was improving. Um, so would Ted have made that deal? I'm guessing no, but... Uh, like I said, we'll probably never really get a true answer to that. Jason, you're still upset about Jordy. I understand. It's an emotional moment. Uh, guy did a lot of good things for Green Bay. Did a lot of things. The only team he's ever played for. Obviously helped them win a Super Bowl. Uh, future Packers Hall of Famer. It's understandable. Any chance the Packers trade up to get a corner? Vince, uh, you know, it's a possibility. I know my colleague Tom Silverstein wrote uh, something at PackersNews.com earlier today. Make sure you check it out. Um, looking at the draft picks the Packers have, um, especially now that they have those two earlier picks in rounds four and five, they especially controlling the top of the third day, uh, they definitely could package something. Uh, if you're following points-wise on the old Jimmy Johnson trade value chart, uh, they definitely could get up into the top ten. Now, the question would be who would they be targeting? Um, maybe Derwin James, um, Ward from Ohio State, somebody like that. But uh, the, the possibility is there. That would be a very aggressive move. Um, and it would definitely signal um, you know, an intent from uh, Brian Gutekunst that he would be able to uh, go up and down dependent on how he feels about players, where they're graded, etc., uh, rather than continuously dropping down, say, for a few times, uh, as Thompson did throughout the years. Let's see. Do you like Melvin over Gaines? Um, it's hard to say. Gaines, Gaines clearly is uh, probably a little bit more well-known and has played a little bit more football. Um, obviously out in Buffalo there. Uh, Melvin bounced around the league for a lot, didn't play a lot until getting to Indianapolis two years ago. And then he played as a starter at the beginning of last year and played well prior to breaking his hand and then eventually landing on IR. I think both players could help the Packers. Uh, both of them um, still out there in free agency. Uh, Gaines, as my colleague Ryan Wood pointed out, does come below the uh, threshold measurements that Ron Wolf put down back in the day that every Packers general manager has followed, basically, uh, since the early 90s. But, you know, exceptions are made. They have been made in the past. So, you know, with the you know, what can only be described as major need at that position, maybe they make an exception. How do you feel about Aaron Jones this coming year? Sophomore slump or continue to thrive? Trevor, I've I stated oh, it was a day or two ago, I, I tend to think he's going to be your uh, quote-unquote starting back uh, by, probably by October. I think a big part of it, obviously, is going to be about pass protection and can he shore that up? Can he get better in that regard? We've seen plenty of guys come into the league not looking great in pass pro and then really improving, uh, especially that year one to year two jump that guys can make. I think he's a good candidate for that. And if he can do that, I don't think there's any question. He's their most talented, purest runner, uh, best vision, uh, best moves in space, got good hands out of the backfield. If they can just get him to improve a little bit in pass protection, I think it'll be really hard to get him off the field. Any insight? As to how Rodgers feels after releasing Nelson, well, we all saw the Instagram post, obviously. 
I can't imagine he's thrilled, but I think he understands it's a business. Uh, I'm sure it's not it wasn't great news to hear Brian Gutekunst saying last night that he spoke to Rodgers after the decision was made, which I think makes perfect sense. Um, but I, yeah, I, I, I'm sure there's an initial flush of maybe anger, maybe he's upset about the uh, you know prospect of heading into the next season without you know arguably his best friend on the team, a guy who's produced a lot for the team. But look, I mean, yeah, Rodgers was reportedly recruiting Jimmy Graham to come to Green Bay. He had to have known that if that deal was going to get done, um, there was a good chance that one of his friends, either Randall Cobb or <laughs> Jordy Nelson, was probably going to be out the door. So he couldn't have been blind to that aspect of it. Um, I can't imagine that any ill will or bad feelings will linger from that decision. Adam, I want Mo Claiborne. I think he makes a lot of sense as well, and he's still out there. Um, obviously, he's bounced around a little bit, but I, you know, I think he... At this point, I keep saying this, um, the, the Packers have to get bodies at that position. They simply cannot expect to uh, go into uh, 2018 with, say, Lindsey Pipkins or Donatello Brown playing significant minutes. Um, now, one of those guys may jump up in training camp, and uh, that's not to dismiss their chances of contributing, but um, if they want to hit the ground running week one and uh, field a competitive defense, they got a lot of work to do yeah, at cornerback. I hope in a few days the whiny Nelson people will stop. Harsh, Daniel. Harsh. Who the hell is the honey badger? <laughs> Danny, that would be Tyron Matthew, uh, formerly a former defensive back for the Arizona Cardinals who was cut today. Uh, he had a big uh, roster bonus due. Uh, the, uh, great player, fantastic player. I loved him coming out of school, uh, out of LSU. Um, I did a piece with him for Sports Illustrated a couple years ago during the draft about red flag guys. He was obviously a big red flag guy coming out of LSU. Uh, he's a great player. Uh, he's dealt with several injuries the last couple years, which is probably why Arizona's um, okay with moving on and not wanting to pay him. Uh, but I tell you what, when he's on the field, he's a difference maker, and the Packers could use him. Now, I tend to think he'll most likely end up with the Giants with his old defensive coordinator, but if he was willing to maybe do a one-year deal, kind of a prove-it thing. Maybe the Packers take a look, and maybe the Packers make that call, but I tend to think he's going to get paid big bucks, and it's not going to be in Green Bay. Does Green Bay need to act soon to get a quality defensive back in free agency? Uh, you know, soon is relative, I guess I would say. Soon being today? No, but soon meaning this week? Probably? Um, we'll see. Well, I mean, the names have gone fast and furious in the last... 24 hours, corners um, obviously being gobbled up left and right. Um, even now, some of the names that I expected maybe the Packers to be in on, like Prince of Mukamara, uh, the lower level, second, second tier, so to speak, guys, though they've started to sign with teams. You know, the initial wave, the Trumaine Johnsons, if you will, the Colvins, the Butlers, I never really seriously thought the Packers would get involved with that kind of money. Uh, those guys are getting big, big paydays. But, you know, Mukamara, uh, Mo Claiborne, as we mentioned earlier, those are the types that I would expect them to get in on. And, um, you know, now is the time that those deals have to get done. It was one reason why I waited as long as I did tonight to jump on here. I thought maybe we might see something late in the day. But, um, yeah, I think now is the time. What difference will Graham make? That's a great question. Um, I was talking to somebody earlier today, and we were debating this point. Um, about how much help, how much does Jimmy Graham actually help? And I think a big part of it is, you know, people look at the the statistics, especially in Seattle the last year, where his yards per catch really went down. Obviously, he had ten touchdowns, which is great. Um, he had a lot. He struggled with drops. Um, he had you know, issues between the twenties. Uh, still a somewhat productive player, but obviously very different offense in Seattle than what he's stepping into in Green Bay. And I think with where he really is going to help the Packers is how he's going to create matchup problems, not only for himself, especially on the perimeter, but how he opens up things for other guys on the field, whether it's Ty Montgomery in the slot or Devontae Adams, say, on the perimeter with Graham in the slot. He's going to make it very uh, tough on defenses to hide what they're doing. Uh, Graham is a big-time chess piece that allows them to, you know, 
he can start in line. Well, he's not going to obviously play much there, but he can start in line, split him out, put him in the slot, even use him in the backfield on occasion. I wouldn't be surprised if McCarthy went there. And, you know, made defenses kind of show their hands, so to speak, as to whether they're, you know, putting a linebacker on him, whether they're playing zone. Uh, Rodgers can manipulate things at the line of scrimmage. That's the kind of stuff they were doing with Jared Cook when they really took off uh, a couple years ago and ran the table. You know, people want to point to, well, Jared Cook only played so many games and he didn't have huge numbers. Yeah, and that's fine and great, but uh, you're not taking into account the effect that he had on everyone else on the football field. And Mike McCarthy talked about it a couple times that year. You could saying, I can't even remember the direct quote, but I'm paraphrasing. He said something like, you know, there's no statistic to show or to quantify what he does as far as opening things up, how he affects the rest of the football field. And I think that's exactly what they want Jimmy Graham for. You know, you can look at his struggles and you can look at the fact that he's not the player he was back in New Orleans when he was putting up huge numbers, and that's all well and good. At the end of the day, he is going to greatly impact everybody else on the football field simply because of how defenses are going to have to play him. And that's a big part of why they wanted to go out and get him. At least that's what I suspect. <laughs> how much of what Gutekunst is doing now um, is him showing he's, he does that he's not Ted Thompson? That's a really good question. I would, you know, I don't think that anything in regards to the moves he's making football-wise, but I tell you what, him being available last night after they cut Jordy Nelson, that is a declaration of, uh, of it's a new day. We got a new guy in charge. He's actually going to come out and talk when he makes a decision, which is something Ted Thompson never did. Never did. Maybe early on in his tenure, but down the stretch, never in a million years. Remember when the whole Martellus Bennett fiasco was going on? Who was answering those questions? Mike McCarthy, a guy who had no nothing to do with the decision to bring Martellus Bennett in. Um, you know, it just and that had been the way at 1265 Lombardi for years, where McCarthy was, you know, forced to answer these questions that should have been answered by the general manager again and again and again. Um, so last night when we got the release that said Gutekunst was going to be available after the cutting of Jordy Nelson, I just about fell off my chair. Couldn't believe it. So, yeah, that is a big, big difference. I heard Graham doesn't like to block. True story? Not only is that a true story, there's, not, there's more to it. He's just not very good at it. So, you can double up. Let's see. What's the possibility of trading up in the first with the first-year GM? What's the possibility? Well, I think they're decent. The problem is we don't really have a track record to go on. To, to say, you know, oh, he's likely to do this or he's likely to do that. Um, the ammunition is there. Um, make sure you read Tom's piece at PackersNews.com today, showing how it would be pretty, not easy, but very doable to get up into the top ten. How about Honey Badger on D? Jeff, I talked about it a little bit earlier in the video. Make sure you check it out um, after I'm done. But short version is I tend to doubt the Packers will be able to afford him. But you never know. Everybody talking about Jimmy, but I think Mo Wilkerson will have a monster year. I mean, the motivation thing is real. Uh, he's certainly coming off two very disappointing seasons in New York. Um, his effort obviously has been called into question more than once, especially uh, here in New York. The media, I, I don't know if you guys are following along, but his mother is threatening to sue Manish Mehta, who has called him an alcoholic in public. Um, yeah, so he's definitely, you know, got some baggage and ready to kind of try and show the world, so to speak, that he is um, not the, uh, the image that has been portrayed of him the last couple of years. Let's see. What can Packers do to have more cap room in the future? Well, Austin, a couple of immediate things they could do is sign Aaron Rodgers to a contract extension, which would undoubtedly be designed to um, bring his cap hit down from the $22 million it's set to be. Or now it's not set to be. It is right now, the new league year as of today. Um, they could extend Clay Matthews, uh, trying to drop down his uh, salary cap number. Uh, they could cut a guy, maybe Balaga or Randall Cobb. There's still moves that they could make. Games are won in the trenches. You got that right. Any hard feelings between Wilkerson and the rest of the team after the fight? I know what you're referencing there. I think it was week two back in 2014. Wilkerson uh, 
and company got into a heated exchange in the end zone. Um, now, guys forget most of that stuff real quickly. I mean, maybe some of you will bring it up in a joking way. Um, but, I mean, I don't know if you guys saw today. The Marius Randall posted a picture of him and Josh Gordon, you know, and saying, you know, all is good. Or I can't remember what he said, but it just kind of pointing to the fact that they're good, despite their, you know, very public beef last year after the game in Cleveland. Um, most of that stuff on the field, they're competitive. And they... They may get upset and they may push and shove, but at the end of the day, 99% of that stuff is forgotten the second they walk off the field. Um, you think Jordy will join the XFL? No, he will have a job in the NFL. Let's see. Geis from LSU would be great in this offense. Jude, I like him as a runner. I'd be surprised if... If Gutekunst pulled the trigger on a back as early as he's most likely to go, but like I said before, it's a new GM. We don't have a track record to go off of, so you never know. It's a possibility, but I tend to think they'll really, they really like the backs that they have. Now that said, you know, I remember back in the day when Eddie Lacy dropped kind of late into the second round. The Packers had not planned on taking him, but they thought the value was too good to pass up, and they ended up selecting him. And obviously, early in his career, he was very effective. Philbin coached Dominican Sue at Miami, maybe, just maybe. Well, Sue put it out there today that he wants to get paid big-time money. He's not really interested in scheme fit or team or what had a locale or anything like that. He wants to get paid, and uh, he's not getting a record-breaking deal in Green Bay or any kind of deal, most likely. Not to mention that um, I'm sure Aaron Rodgers would not be thrilled with that idea, although, you know. Maybe <laughs> that'd be fun to watch. <laughs> uh, how much should Rodgers be consulted for football moves? Not at all. It ain't his gig. He's the quarterback. He's not the personnel guy. He's not the GM. He's not LeBron. This ain't the NBA. I mean, maybe out of courtesy, I'm sure they would probably tell him, look, we're, we're going to be cutting Jordy Nelson prior to it becoming you know, public knowledge, but yeah, they don't ask him, should we do this? No, 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 that ain't the game. You think we may get, uh, sorry, oh, guys, they go too fast. I'm sorry. ESPN seems to be on this narrative that Rogers feels disrespected. I mean, maybe it's true. Maybe they've spoken to him. Uh, maybe they're, maybe that's, you know, background source stuff that Rogers is, uh, trying to get out there, but I mean, I just don't see it. And if he does feel disrespected, that's, that's more than a little silly. It's, it's show business. It ain't show friends. Is there room for Dial on the roster after signing Wilkerson? That's a good question. I would tend to think it would depend on uh, the deal itself. Um, he did a lot of good work last year. He did a lot of dirty work. Um, but with Wilkerson there, obviously they still have Lowry. Um, maybe not, but... You never know. Injuries happen. They, they may need a body down the line. Uh, maybe he's still sitting out there after the draft. Um, or maybe they just really like him and they bring him back uh, on a on a team-friendly deal if he's amiable to it. Um, it's definitely something to watch. Any pass rushers Green Bay should sign? Oof. It's tough. Not In free agency, there ain't a whole lot available. I know, say, like Elvis Dumerville came available the other day, but he's a guy that they had out there last year. They didn't sign him. Um, you know, it, most pass rushers are, are kept by the teams that, uh, uh, that they're about to escape from contract-wise. And, you know, on the odd chance that they do kind of get out there, um, they're usually not dynamic guys. Uh, the best pass rushers are usually kept and re-signed prior to hitting free agency. You could really do your own show on one of our local channels. You know, but then I'd have to, like, probably get dressed up and shave. Who wants that? Will uh, what, Adams and Lowry warrant some four-man fronts? I kind of think that, you know, Patton's definitely going to keep all options open, and he's probably going to try and... Um, see if, you know, what kind of fronts work best given the personnel he's given. And that probably won't be com a complete picture until after the draft. But 
um, you know, when he was in Buffalo, he ran a bunch of four-man stuff. So, yeah, if he feels that, uh, you know, Nick Perry maybe plays a little better with his hand in the ground, who knows? We'll see. What about Connor Barwin? That's another name that, you know, he was available, um, and they never really seemed to have any interest in him. So, obviously, it's a new GM, but still the same scouting staff for the most part. I would tend to doubt it. Eric Ebron, number two blocking tight end. Oh, he's, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a huge Ebron fan. I mean, I don't know how the Packers feel about him. And they've given the money they've just committed to Jimmy Graham, although we haven't really seen the contract yet, so who really knows? I know three years for $30 million was put out there this morning, although that was most likely by Jimmy Sexton, his agent. We don't know what the real money is. Um, I'd be surprised if they went after another tight end in free agency. Um, I know they had looked at Dixon from Carolina, but uh, now he's off the table because they got uh, Jimmy Graham. <clears throat> I tend to think they'll probably bring back Richard Rodgers before they look at anybody else. What do you expect from Montrevious Adams in year two? Oh, can, can, can he stay healthy and he, can he get on the field? Um, obviously, really frustrating and disappointing rookie year for him because of the injury that kept him out for a good long while. And then when he did hit the field, really didn't do much. The, the tape, he kind of existed in space is the best thing I can say about him his rookie year. So hopefully he hits the weight room, comes back with a, you know, burning a desire to tear it all down, uh, take apart offensive linemen, because that's a third round pick. They, they need to get something from that investment starting day one of his second year, because yeah, he, he could offer something. The word always uh, that we heard prior to uh, his arrival in Green Bay after he was drafted was what, um, you know, supposedly he was going to bring to the interior pass rush. Well, that's definitely something they could use. And in a rotation with Wilkerson and company, yeah, that, that'd be a valuable asset. But, you know, until we see him on the field actually uh, doing it down in and down out, it's hard to say. Um, but, like I said, I've said a number of times, and, you know, the Packers repeat it ad nauseum, the biggest jump these guys make traditionally is from year one to year two, and the Packers can only hope that that's the case for Montrevious Adams. Austin brings up another guy, Vince Beagle, to make a jump. One would think, now he's even more of a case where you don't really know what you have there because he didn't have any offseason. He hurt himself so early. Uh, I think it was the first practice of the first rookie uh, camp that, uh, you know, he didn't have any offseason, any offseason work. He missed not only all the offseason, but the entire first six weeks of the season. Didn't put pads on until like halfway through the year. Uh, and then when he did, he was kind of running around like a chicken with his head cut off because Clearly, he hadn't any work, and there's only so much you can do in the classroom and you know, mental reps, what have you. Um, but yeah, he's another guy that they could definitely you know, look to get something from in his second season, if he can stay healthy. What's up with your hat? It's uh, on my head. Do you think they will pick up a wide receiver in free agency? I don't, Matt. Um, I think they'll look at the draft. Colin, you love Vince Beagle. I don't love Vince Beagle. I don't know what he is in the NFL. I know what he did in college, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, can we see him do something before we hate on him? How about that? How about you hate Vince Beagle for no reason? You need to find love in your heart. How about that? Spread love, man, not hate. Your thoughts on the Vikings with Cousins? Dennis, it definitely uh, has to... I mean, you got to say they're the best team in the NFC North heading into 2018 right now, as we stand. But a lot of offseason left. We'll see how it shakes out. Long term, you do wonder about uh, what it means for their cap and what they're going to be able to do as, in regards to keeping that defense together. Um, but yeah, right now, that's a pretty formidable squad. No beer today. <laughs> There'll be beer as soon as I hit end, I'll tell you that. Let's see. The hat should have a G on it, though. No, 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 no. I don't cheer for the Packers. I just talk about them for a living. Damon. Hello. We've always had the best team on IR. <laughs> nice. Bears have a better roster than the Packers? Uh, I don't know about that, Jamie. Um, they definitely added some pieces, though, in the last 24 hours. There's no doubt about that. How much does Rodgers have to prove this year? I don't think Rodgers has to prove anything. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer with a championship under his belt. Uh, you know... 
maybe he has to prove what that he can still throw the ball really far really accurately or that his shoulder is healthy that his shoulder's healthy i'll say that that's what he has to prove i'd love to see more yancey and clark this year jesse i agree i think yancey in particular d'angelo yancey uh for those that don't remember was the uh, purdue wide receiver he was a rookie that was on the practice squad all last year um he was showing real promise at the end of camp and pre in the preseason um, I'm very excited to see what he can do next year because I think he could, he could take a big jump. He's a guy, a big guy, but he can work downfield. Um, he could be a prototypical uh, perimeter guy in this offense. And now, obviously, there is a spot open uh, at, said, at said perimeter. Is Joe Thomas a Hall of Famer? Travis, if you're talking about Cleveland's Joe Thomas, yes, first ballot, he'll walk in. If you're talking about Green Bay's Joe Thomas, that would be a no. Do you think King will be a constant starter? Yes, Bryce, I do. Who is your team? Uh, the Brewers. How much upside does Kaiser have? A decent amount, Peter. I'll tell you what. I know people, you know, look at the whole thing with Cleveland last year, and they look at his time in Notre Dame, and oh, he's not a winner, or he's not accurate, et cetera, et cetera. I'm telling you, man, I think there are a lot of tools there. Now, I don't think he's ever going to be a good starter in the NFL, but I think he could be a good backup for a long time in the league. Uh, and if that's all he uh, ever is, that's success, man. Uh, there are like, you know, what, 60 guys who can play legit play quarterback in the NFL. And if you're one of them, you're top of the mountain there, man, out of the thousands and thousands of people that try and play football for a living. So, um, yeah, I, I think he, I don't think he's the heir apparent or anything. I don't think he was brought in to uh, take over when Rodgers leaves. Uh, definitely not saying that, but I, don't, I think he's talented, and I think he's got a decent ceiling. Will Callahan or Hundley be cut? Possibility, James. Um, I tend to think they'll bring all those guys uh, through the offseason and let them compete. Uh, McCarthy mentioned to us at the Combine wanting to have four arms in training camp, so they got four right now. Uh, but that doesn't mean that Maybe somewhere down the line, something happens with the roster, they need that spot, and maybe Callahan goes. I would tend to doubt they cut Hundley outright without bringing him to camp and letting him compete, though. Why don't I live in Wisconsin, Matthew? Because I live in New York. The D-line is going to be a wall against the run. Yeah, you would think so. Uh, now they just got to find some defensive backs to defend the pass. Are we bringing Evans back? That's a good question. Nothing is imminent as far as I know. Right now, I tend to think they're going to try and stay in-house with the young guys that they have. Um, Panky, McCray, uh, Patrick. Uh, but you never know. May maybe down the line. I know Evans had talked about he was mulling retirement at the end of the year. Maybe he wants to come back for one more year. But I think they've got the guys to play guard. The problem is tackle. You know, if Evans was a tackle, then yeah, I think there would be no question they'd be trying to get, get him back. But at guard, I think they're okay. Does Hundley have any trade value? Not much. Um, but heck, Trevor Simeon just got traded, so maybe. If you don't cheer for the Packers, who do you cheer for? I love these questions. I don't cheer for anybody. Um, I cheer for early uh, stories that get done uh, before deadlines and uh, you know news to break before I have to feed my kids. Cobb, Matthews, any word? No, Matt, no, Nicholas, no word on any of those guys. Um, and if there was going to be word on any of them, I would tend to think it would be Matthews uh, and some kind of extension or restructuring. I don't think they're going to touch Cobb, but we'll see. I know the lampshade is crooked, people. You're just going to have to deal with it. Here, watch this. Huh? Huh? Look, check it. Chocolate. Here. I like that. Uh, any love for Tremont Williams left in Green Bay? You know, I don't know. I don't know. They, uh, you know, the, the, there were never any burning of bridges there, obviously. I would be very surprised if they brought him back um, because of his age. Obviously, he played well down there in Arizona last year. Um, clearly, it's helped when you have Patrick Peterson on the opposite side, but... Um, yeah, I'd be surprised at that move, but I don't think it'd be the world's worst idea, uh, simply because they need the bodies, and he's a guy who's played in Mike Patton's defense before. 
Um, so we'll see. So it's... <laughs> All right, I just got a personal question about my wife, so it's time to go. Uh, thanks a lot, everyone. It's lovely to see you all, even those of you ripping on my lampshade. Um, thanks so much for joining me. Make sure you're checking PackersNews.com for all the latest. Um, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, barring any breaking news tonight, because anything can happen in these first days of free agency. Um, otherwise, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good night.